This is a dialog system quick start for the Unity asset dialog system by Indie Devs. Here's an example of how cool it is in my game The Last Phoenix and my girlfriend's game Meet Again Hartwell. So the first thing you want to do is click Window, Package Manager, and then find the asset and click Import. You'll find a folder in your project called Indie Devs. Here, click Documentation, and hopefully the documentation helps you. We'll be improving it over time. So probably one of the first things you want to do is go to the examples folder, open this up and there are example scenes in here. By the way, if you have errors, make sure you update your events system. So to get started, you'll want to create your own folder. Do not add your assets into the indie devs folder because if this assets updated, you know, it could mess with stuff, create your own folder. I put a dash in front of it. So it would pop up at the top of my assets. So first let's go over characters. Characters are scriptable objects. Right click on the folder where you want to create a character. Click create and then dialog system. Here you will see a bunch of options. The one we want is obviously character. So we created a new character here and I'm just going to call this character Bob. And so we can give Bob a name. This is the name that will appear in the nameplate if you make one. And then we can add emotions. These emotions are strings. When I say string, I just mean you can type on your keyboard to make up your own emotions. For example, happy, sad, and mad. The cool thing about this is different characters can have different emotions. So for example, if Bob has a wave emotion, you can think of these as emotes too. They don't have to just trigger emotions. You can have them trigger animations or other things within your game. So for example, we can have jump here and during a dialogue, Bob could jump or something like that. You can create as many of these as you want. It's pretty awesome. So the next step is to create a prefab for Bob. I'm not going to make a prefab for Bob. I'll use an ex I'm going to delete Bob now and I'll use an example of one of the characters I've created. By the way, an easier way than right clicking and going to create and then dialogue system is to just control D and you can duplicate an existing character. All right, let me delete this one. So for example, Evelyn here, we have her emotions, we have her name. Here's the prefab. If I double click it, you can see that I'm using an image because she's going to be in the UI and I separated the eyes and the expression. You do not need to do this, but the awesome thing about this dialogue system is that it is very, very flexible. You, you can also use a sprite renderer. You don't have to use an image for when you're doing this dialogue system. It's very flexible. I created my own character portrait script. There is one that comes in the project. There's one that comes with indie devs. So if I search character portrait, you can see here's my script and here's the indie devs script. And the difference is that for my script, I added the min and max interval for the eye blinking and I added an eyes animator. Quick tip, you can have multiple inspectors. And then for example, I can click on Evelyn here and click this lock button. Now that inspector is locked. And here I can click on the Evelyn prefab and we can compare these. So this is the scriptable object. It's this Evelyn. And then over here, when I click the prefab, I have the character portrait script on Evelyn. Something important that you need to do is you need to try to make these emotions match. So here's a drop down for emotions that you'll have in the character portrait. And this string, whatever you call this emotion, needs to match this one. For example, if I call this one smile, it will, it will not work because I don't have smile as an emotion. In the console, you will get a warning telling you that you're missing an emotion. To get a dialogue system working in your game, you're going to have to create your own dialogue UI manager. Create a new script. Double click the script and you'll see that you got nothing in it. And dialogue UI manager is the script that comes with the dialogue system um, and paste it. And now that means you're inheriting from it. As you can see, it gave me an error. It says that I'm missing all of these, but if you're using Visual Studio, you can um, just have it fill those in for you. Bada bing, bada boom. And so now our dialogue system works. And um, we don't just want to throw exceptions. <laughs> you want to actually do things. You want to do things here. And so what I would recommend is just copy one of the dialogue systems that's inside of the project. 
here we have three dialogue systems for you to copy. Just copy dialog UI manager one if you want to have emotions. Okay, so once you make a few characters, what you'll probably want to do is create a dialogue. To create a dialogue, you can right click create dialogue system and then click dialogue tree. Or you can just duplicate an existing dialogue. You can see information about them here. But working on dialogues this way in the inspector is not fun. What we do is a node system and the node system makes it really easy to visualize how the dialogue flows. So here we have a start node. This is where your dialogue starts. So what you want to do is right click and you get a couple of options here. The dialogue node will be your most common option. Okay, and the only other node you need is an end node. And now you have a dialogue. We have to connect these nodes together. Just drag an output to an input. And this controls the flow. So we can see that this dialogue will start, go to this one, and then it'll end. <clears throat> we decide who the speaker is. The speaker is going to be one of those scriptable objects that you created. So for example, Evelyn. And then you decide the emotion. These are the emotions that you created in that scriptable object. So let's make her happy. And then the position can be left or right. Um, let's just make her left. Um, and then for the bubble type, you have different bubbles here. Um, basic speech bubble, I think is fine. You can even add an audio clip and then type in your message. The way I like to make my games is I leave it at zero and zero means that the dialogue will stay on the screen until the player goes to the next dialogue. But if you make this like three seconds, it'll automatically go to the next dialogue without the player having to click the next dialogue button. So now let's go back to the listener. A listener is the person who is across from the person, <laughs> someone who can, who can react to what's being said. I created a script to trigger a dialogue. You can create your own scripts to trigger a dialogue. This one is a very simple script. Basically on trigger enter, I used a box collider here. You can see this green. Um, make sure it's a trigger, right? <laughs> and then all I do is I set the dialogue systems dialogue to a specific dialogue. I'll get to that later. I just wanted you to understand it real quick. So all I need to do is drag this scriptable object here. So I'm gonna walk up to this character and we triggered the dialogue. And as you can see, she's saying the dialogue to nobody. And so what you want to do is in the dialogue tree, add a listener. This is only necessary for the very first dialogue because once you have somebody else say something, they'll pop in. So if I add a dialogue node, a new one, we want to connect the first dialogue to the second and then to the, to the end node. Let's say she's talking to Obor. Evelyn says her dialogue, we click the next button, and now Obor pops in. And so from this point on, you don't always need to add listeners. But for that very first dialogue, if you want her to be saying it to someone, like if we wanted my Obor character to already be there, that's when you click add listener. So here I click add listener, I'm, gonna, I'm going to select Obor, he's going to be um, happy, and he's going to be on the right side. And you don't get to give the listener a dialogue because they're just reacting to the dialogue. So now if I hit play, we can see Evelyn talks and Obor's already here. And then Obor says his line. The next thing that you might want to do is a choice node. I'm going to remove this dialogue. You can just click delete. I'm going to add a choice node. This is how you create branching, which is awesome for visual novels um, and giving obviously players choices on how they want to respond. So let's say um, this is going to be Obor. He's going to be happy on the right, normal speech bubble. And he's going to say, how do you feel? Then you click the add choice button. And here are the two different choices, right? And so she can say happy and she can say sad. So now you need to create two dialogues. I think it'll make for better gameplay if you get different responses. And then don't forget to also make both of them go to the end node. So he asks Evan, how do you feel? We have happy and sad. I'm going to choose happy and we should see Evelyn smile. There she goes. She smiled and she said, ha ha ha. 
I would love to tell you a lot more about how I set up my dialogue system, but I think it's important for me to show you a couple of other concepts, events and variables. So here I created an events folder and we can right click create dialogue system. And then here we can create an event or a variable. You have a couple of different variables to choose from, but let's do an event first. So I'm going to create an event and we can call this one open uh, gate or something like that. If you're going to have an event happen in a dialogue, your hierarchy, your scene needs this prefab, the dialogue event manager, and it's a singleton. So only put one into a scene. And if you're going to have variables change, then you're going to use the variable manager. This might be the most complicated uh, aspect of this dialogue system, but I'm going to make it butter smooth for you. So all you got to do is just drag the prefab into your scene and now events will work. However, I have to tell this dialogue event manager what events I'm going to try to trigger in this scene. So we can just click this plus button here and then we can go to the dialogue events and drag your event into the key. And then here you just decide what you want to do when this event is called. So for example, I'm going to create a um, empty game object here. This doesn't even have any scripts on it yet, but I just want to show you, all you got to do is drag any game object. This could be a gate. This could be um, whatever, another NPC. You just drag that game object to this location, and then you can decide what functions you want to call on that game object. So for example, set active, I could make it make a game object active or not active or you can call functions on that game object so if i go back to this event example and i um add a script uh, you know a simple script that i have for example i created a um an event script here and then what i can do um, or we can even add like a sprite render and now if I go back to the dialog event manager here, you can see now I can access the sprite render and the do event simple. So every component you add on that game object, you can now call any function that you want in that game object. Okay. So I'm just going to add a big star sprite on this. And so this event example, I'm going to rename this to star. And what I'm going to do is make the star appear. So um, let me remove this component. We don't need that. And I'm just going to turn this game object off. And so you can see the star is gone when I turn it off. And so now what I'm going to do is make sure that the game object set active is true. So I'm going to rename the event to show star just so that we know what it's doing. And in the now we go to the dialog. So I just removed all the dialogues because we're going to focus on the event. Um, just really quickly, I'm going to have Felix say, uh, show me a star or something like that. Felix is the main character for, uh, for my game. He's a goblin. Show star. All right. And then I'm going to click, choose the event node. And once I choose the event node, I'm going to link it and here. I get to choose the show star scriptable object and that's it. It's that simple. And so when we play now, and then once I click the next button, that's what fires the event. And so boom, the event fired and there's the star. This is so powerful and so simple. I hope you have a lot of fun doing pretty much anything that you want. Okay. So there's one more thing to show you and that's variables. So we can uh, delete this. Uh, I'm going to delete the star. I'm going to delete the dialog event manager. And instead I'm going to drag in the dialog variable manager. You can have both of them in your scene, but remember you can only have one of each. The reason why I'm adding these dashes in front of my folder is so that it doesn't, I don't get confused with this folder. Oh, my earbud fell out when I do, <laughs> when I do a search. So, um, for example, variables, right? See my folder pops up at the top now. Um, just a quick little trick. All right. So I, now I can cre um, go to create dialog system, dialog variable, integer variable. All right. And we'll just call this integer variable <laughs> for now. And then we have this dialog manager here. And then because this is an integer, what you need to do is drag it into the integer variables. Look, if I close all these, 
these are the different types of variables you can control through the dialog system. And so since we created an integer, we drag it into the integer slot. If we create any of the other ones, obviously you just drag it in there. So now that I dragged it in here, once again, we need a game object that it's gonna change an integer variable on and just name this variable test, making this super simple for you. I'm gonna make a new C-sharp script and call it variable. <laughs> in here in variable, we're gonna do public int my variable and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. So we're gonna add this variable on here and you can see that the variable is zero. And now we drag that game object over here and now it lets me choose what variable I want. You see how it says variable here? And then my variable. Uh, the reason why I can select transform here is because the game object has a transform. And so if I go into the script here and I add um, public int age, I'm gonna tell you the truth, I'm 35. Here I can choose age, you see that? So you can hook it up to whatever, whatever integer that you want. It's just a link between the dialogue system and some kind of variable on a script. All right, so now that we have age here, let's go to the dialogue system and use this somehow, right? I'm gonna add a if statement, if node, because that's the point of variables is to check them. So we're gonna add an if node here and reconnect everything to go through the if node. And here we're gonna add a condition. Now we're gonna select our um, scriptable object for that variable. And now you decide what you wanna check. So for example, if age is greater than, and then I said I was 35, so I'm gonna say if age is greater than 60, and then you can choose what results what results you want. So I'll create a dialog here. And if age is greater than 60, I'm old. Else, if Felix is, is not 60, I'm not old. Now, um, he's still saying she'll start, disregard that. He, but he said, I'm not old because it checked this variable and it was 35. Now, if I make this 99, Felix is gonna say, I'm old. You see that? It worked. And so with these things, hopefully you can create just about anything you need. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your game. And I hope you uh, back my my Kickstarter for this game. It'll, it would mean a lot to me. And I hope to see your games. Ah, uh, Devla.